98 horsepower donuts is going to upset them. <laughs> The gang's gonna split up and make some cool things happen. I have to go to Valvoline's booth and do a question and answer session where the Corvette needs to be in Hoonigan's booth at the same time. Unfortunately, engine mounts for the Corvette snapped on the drive just from all the bouncing and everything like that. So Isaiah and the guys are gonna figure that out and get the car there and then thrash on the RX-8. I don't know, today's gonna be a really cool set of events. So look how beautiful this painting is. I almost cried. It's, <laughs> this is abstract, beautiful H. Wow. Since Rob came early one day, he said, oh, I'm gonna get you guys your passes, I'm gonna come back. And I said, okay, cool. Slept a little bit. Didn't get us our passes and didn't come back. So now we're in a back alley, right? And we're looking for black curtains. And I'm getting kind of scared. So this has to be black curtains. If they're not black curtains, then I don't know what to do. Going home, I guess. Well, this is super exciting. I've been a huge fan of Matt for a while. I did not know we were doing this uh, before SEMA started, but we're actually doing a fun little uh, smoking tire podcast here in the Valvoline booth. How I'm gonna talk about cars for two hours, I have no idea. <laughs> in that sense, I mean that little bit of time. <laughs> I can run up my mouth forever. But yeah, super exciting. This is a fun little part. I'm sure you can check it out once you see this video. You can check out their podcast of whatever we're talking about shortly. <laughs> The way here over at Turbo Smart. It's actually really cool. I like that a lot. So I'm gonna use this on my wastegate dump on the RX-8 when I get the three rotor in there. So hopefully it gets blown up today and then I just take one of these. I'll just take this one home, honestly. All right, I can take this one home after? Um, wait like two months, dude. Okay, uh, Josh, I can take this one home, right? He said no, so I gotta ask the, the, the right guy. I mean, you're gonna have to get through him, unfortunately. That is a beast, beast mode unit. Yeah, no, it's a monster. We're over here in Anagravity's booth. They're lithium batteries that look like they should weigh a lot more, and they're actually what we use in the four rotor, and it is amazing. The power that it kicks out, the weight it is, it's just phenomenal. Like, even the controls, you can actually drain the battery and it still has a reserve charge. It's, it's just really advanced stuff, and so Bart's been phenomenal. And he, he sent me one of the smaller ones. They have a smaller unit than this. And we, for some reason, I swear to God, our neighbors at the, at the shop, our neighbors are like, hey, do you have anything to jump a battery and I'll bring out, I'll whip out the little baggie and, and whatnot. And like, we all look at it like, this isn't gonna work. And every time it starts their car, it is the coolest thing. And so Bart's saying, this is something more for like my situation, which I have tried it once, right? Like, Whoa. That's your plug that plugs into it. Oh yeah. And there, and then you hook that up to the battery with those nice big lamps. Like that yeah and then these would just hook up and it'll tell you over here if it's hooked up correctly or if you have reverse polarity hooked up. Oh, wow. okay so it's smart and you're not destroying something yeah if the battery is completely dead you'd hit the boost button so it'll jump the car from a completely dead oh, battery. Shit. Wow. otherwise if it has some power it'll detect that it has power yeah oh, nice. and then just boost it up right away a truly smart you put one on your finger and I put one on my finger. that won't work both on your nipples <laughs> so here's a little compressor that we also offer as well. It's a hot ticket. Well, will this work for adding a few PSI like the yes. drag strip? Oh, so, like, that's we, for we the drag strip. Our, our PSI to get more grip. We want to drive it home or up on the trailer. We can just perfect. Oh, that's, that's exactly. Yes, that's, that's, I saw that and I was like, yeah, yes. And then you I have that. that. You, so we have powered that, by that, your microstart. That bulky thing that sounds all ugly and not as cool. So. So how would I plug this into the microstart? So. Plug. Your cord, <laughs> which is right here, this oh. cord plugs in and charges that. Yep. But it just plugs in on the side Whoa. here. So that. And then this. That is so cool. And it goes up to 80 psi, right? 
<laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Hey, wow. <laughs> I need you. Yeah, let's do it right here. Hell yeah. This is real time. This is what's happening. Yeah, this is awesome. This is hilarious. So we got two other YouTubers over here. We got Rich. We got both those guys. Now this is one time where I am even Team LS is that Rich swapped a LS V8 into a Tesla. And so he's, he's going with the Boost Boys and he's showing them you know everything. He's showing Kyle all, all that stuff. But we're here in the vibrant booth and it's like it's like a meeting of all the random YouTubers all at once. I got all the YouTubers in my, in my booth now. That's good. That's pretty good. wild. Like. This is good to go. In stock, ready to go. So, okay. Two things. There's actually two, three different products that we created out of this one. Okay. So the first one is the spacer. Some cars like the BRZ, uh, EJ20s, yeah, yeah. they have that little cup mount where you have the oil filter. Yeah, so they leak out pretty much, right? Yeah, I guess when you're when you're changing the filter, you can't put a sandwich adapter on that. Okay. So we created a, an adapter that is a spacer, but also has provisions for uh, sensors. So there's little ports around it. Okay. You can mount just the sandwich adapter with no spacer, or you can mount just just the spacer onto a filter if you need a sensor. I see. Right? That's it's a fully thermostatic. You see those little teeth? Yeah. So when you punch those down after you install it, it'll never move. So oh, that's how wow. it comes. This is, okay. Like fully brushed and polished. And what size is this? this? Is 050, right? And most other companies that have 035, which is suit like half the thickness of regular stuff. This is 050, which I like to use because it gives you a nice reverberation with like an exhaust system and stuff like that. And it's thicker, harder to break. I mean. And it's still super light. This is insane. Look how tight that thing is. Can I get that little bend to, to compare? The cool thing about these is look at how much of a tighter radius that is. So you can fit this in a lot more places and I don't have to do pie cuts, which literally take me like five times the normal time it does. And these, this is also a titanium bend, which is insanely light. Rob is just gone. Justin's helping me out by getting me a jack and some jack stands. We're gonna go back to the parking lot, jack it up, try to jack up the engine and then probably wedge something under there or get it just enough to get back here to put it up on a lift just to make sure that we're going to be able to get back to home or do anything. You want to see what I have here that you can wedge under? I got a lot of metal. You need to cut those down? Yeah. Gonna fit? Yeah. Can you guys cut these down for me? I mean, I, I want to step on the pedal of the big machine. Yeah. It goes boom and it cuts everything. And it makes and really big noises. Yeah. Really easy too. Is anyone trying to put a finger in there? You can't. One, two, three, four, five. You get a oh, finger in there, you, that's five hundred dollars. Oh. I, my Go fingers ahead. are too my finger that's way you, way I too can't cheap put a for my finger. Under that thing. I bought this so that way nobody uh, everyone can... don't look, I'm gonna put something else in there. It's that small? <laughs> hey, that's <laughs> right about there. Make sure it's squared up yeah, down there. Right there yeah. Step on the pedal. There you go. Now you got eight pieces. <laughs> that's that's two inches tall. You think that's enough? That, that is enough. Okay. That's that's bad. <laughs> that's, that's enough. This is quarter inch. That's not easy to do. Thank you. So we'll be back to, to mess with them some more. We're going to stop production and everything just to, to ruin their night. Yeah, so this is our TTX 40 shop. It's a four-way manifold shock absorber that has our TTX so technology. In and outer body, there's a solid piston on the shaft that functions just like an engine would. Unlike a rotary, <laughs> it pushes the fluid through this manifold and goes through these valves. So these valves, you can separately control compression and rebound, high and low speed. So it's a four-way. You have the ability to control the, the chassis movement from driver inputs, like hitting the brakes, getting on the gas, steering wheel movement, those slow movements where the shock's just moving a little bit. So you can actually adjust the, how the shock blows off. And for your, your indie project, yeah, we could set up a practical package like that. This is super exciting. As you guys know, I use all my X clutch stuff and they just came out with a hydraulic release bearing, which this is basically what pushes in the clutch. So you see it just like here, you're pushing down on these fingers to release the clutch. And so this, they now have this unit that we can use on our weird projects. Like this sort of project, you, you know how far it moves based on the hydraulic fluid in, you know, this, well, this one's a bleeder. So the, the hydraulic fluid comes in from here, pushes in that, there you go, you release your clutch. So whenever you're pressing the clutch pedal, you're actually normally pushing something like this. It's like a throw out bearing, where a throw out bearing will, will have a little fork like this. This is actually the hydraulics are inside of it, and that you're pushing out much more firm, much more like responsive to your foot, all that sort of stuff. So this will come in very handy for our projects as we move forward. We have something like this in the rotary vet, but I wish this one was out at the time. Very, very excited about this.
Rob and I talked about this. You swear an oath to me. <laughs> yes. Oh man, look at that. I just got a brand Welcome new Welcome to TFS. And that's because Rob's not here helping. I put the pieces of metal underneath it. It seems to be a lot better, but this thing definitely has something going on with it. Should be fine to drive. We're just gonna put it up on a lift just to double check and make sure nothing's completely wrong with it. That way we can at least drive it back. Honestly, it was driving just fine. Um, if it's something simple I think we could do, we could do, but it's not gonna be easy to just pull this out like this. I got oil on my nose. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to the rotary again. <laughs> so we just uh, wedged the fuck out of this metal into here underneath the engine. So it's gonna push it up, not allow it to torque underneath to put pressure onto the pilot bearing. So we should be good. This last of the drive over here and it felt better and didn't make that noise as it was before. So um, hopefully this is just enough to get us back. We'll figure it out when we get home. I'll probably have Rob machine me a nice engine mount, make it all nice and fancy and put all this extra work into it since he wasn't here for this. I have never ever seen this much oil on my floor. And we cleaned this already. So this isn't even as much as there was. Dude. Yeah. But thank you, we appreciate you so I, much for- I christened this, I blessed this, the rotary engine. There like, you go. It's, yep. That's legit. These plates will not fall out. They, will, they won't even wiggle out right now. So the engine is resting on this. Isn't the best thing, but subframe is mounted to the chassis. So it's just going to cause a little bit more vibration. But as long as there's no pressure on the pilot bearing, we are good to go. I have one weld that I want him to judge because it's the worst weld. What do you think about, about this guy right here? This, this guy right here. Hey, look at that guy. Did you buff it? Yep. Yeah, it looks like a wire wheel. Did, yep. Okay, which one was the tube set? So if it was more over here, and your gas blew down. Mm -hmm. The argon flowed because it's heavier than oxygen, yeah. and it sucked in the atmosphere afterwards, and that's what blew it out. I, but I, I fuck with that a lot. This yeah, time is, so. dude, don't worry about it. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> that baby ain't going nowhere. <laughs> thank you. Wow, thank he you. said yes. it. You didn't yes. say it, dude. Yes. No, he knows. Out of the whole thing, what do you think about? I want a rating out of ten. No, I the, love it. The whole I love setup. It. Um, Your welds and my welds are very, very different. Yes. You like the spaced out style. Mm -hmm. I like the very, very tight gap. Yep right but that that doesn't make a weld better or worse yep i would definitely on your fab work and everything else like that the alignment the you know everything else like that dude i would definitely throw this up there he's scared to say a 10 because he knows it's gonna go to my head tell you what i'm gonna give you a nine okay wow yeah. the, the welds could be better i could have spent more time on forget that. the welds that's that's oh. the difference between you and me okay okay right forget that but i saw you back purge Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's a solid build. I love, I love the looks of it. Man. I was, I was watching the video and I'm like, dude, yes, <laughs> that's good. I was in it. No, no, it's fantastic. There's You're gonna be in this one. That. You're gonna be in this one because you, you helped more than Rob today. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Okay guys, so we're good to go. It doesn't bind up like it used to. I'm able to modulate the clutch properly. Uh, Justin helped out a lot. Early in the morning, we'll take it over to Hoonigan, the C5 and the RX-8. We'll have the RX-8 ready for her to rip and the C5 will just be there for everybody to look at. Justin is feeling wonderful right now. And he knows I love his Viper because his Viper is actually similar to something that I own. White outside, beautiful red interior like gorgeous red it just this whoo everybody knows i love red interior and he's like oh you want to go for a viper right of course i want to go for a viper right? what type of question is that so we're gonna go for a viper right oh yeah the seats are so nice Are you about to send it right now? I don't know, we'll see. Mm -hmm. 
RK is just too easy to drive. This is just too reliable. The reverse is broken. Uh, no, you have to push down. Push down. <laughs> it's easy to drive, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's just, it's just natural. That's what it's meant to do. Hopefully, it blows up tomorrow. We're going to show them how they're supposed to be done. Sure. Yeah, you're a little hot. I think that's the coolest. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but you're... We're good. We're good. All right. <laughs> that baby ain't going nowhere. <laughs> that baby's good. So we have a small cooling trail, but that is literally out, out this guy right here. If I could pull that out, that's just the overflow. So it is working. We, we are... We're hurt proof, I think. I think, at least. So tomorrow, we're, we're going to have... We're going to find that out. Try to smoke my blood. And watch you be my guy, my guy's trying to smoke his blunt and watch me do my thing. So obviously, I gotta, well, I gotta let him smoke his blunt and do my thing real quick. That's, that's just a mandatory. We are doing one of the weirdest things that we've done in a long time. We do a lot of really weird things. We have five people, four seats, one two rotor. They got a lot of weird numbers there. We need to get to SEMA in the RX-8. You you can sit on my lap or... It's up to you. Do you guys want the back or... Like each of us take one back seat. You guys sit? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Or, okay. Unless she wants okay. to sit on your lap. Or Joel can sit on my lap. Hey, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I guess my room is Yeah. The room is easier. I roped you into this. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I roped Isaiah into that. We all roped each other into this. <laughs> okay, this is actually completely on brand for us. We are outside of SEMA. We're parked here, hard parked. We could like move some stuff around, but that's the, you know how we, we don't, we respect everybody else's property and whatnot, but the RX-8 made it. The Corvette, as you saw, we left it back there at the hotel. It's perfectly fine in the sense of that, but I'm a sucker for peer pressure and I would end up ripping that and, and destroying it. I would go until something bad happens. So it's really good that I'm not bringing the rotary vet here today, but we got this here and my God, I, 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 even I love to hate on our own projects like this one and somehow this thing has the spirit of a bull it, is, it will not give up and it doesn't even have any problems there's no problems with this thing whatsoever we're here I'm happy we're gonna continue going around the halls we're gonna go check out some new technology out there too and we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with this as you can hear behind us, we are in the shred zone. What's awesome is that Isaiah is making Hurt uncomfortable because Hurt isn't sure he wants to shred the RX-8. Isaiah is like, oh yeah, go hard. So we'll, we'll see how far we can get it to happen, but we're in here and well, we're here to prove, we're here to prove everything. So I'm excited. We'll see what happens next. You ready? I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Can you tell him why you don't want to do it? Because he won't let me blow it up. I That's will. the only I will. I will. No, you, you said. So look, if you, you blows said. it up, I get a three rotor. Simple as that. So do it, please. We, we're all of us are big. He says it's I okay. I want you to. Yes, I want you to. So I can pin it against the K rail and fucking burn it down. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm glad. I want you to do it, please. Don't let the can let it overheat. That's honestly, that, that, that's what I want you to no, do. No, that, that's not what they don't want. That. And then, then that's not what they if want. If it doesn't overheat, yeah. then go ahead. Yeah. I see all of these people. Yeah, they're bored. They're bored. 98 horsepower donuts is going to upset them. No, it's the RX-8. They're not. They, they know horsepower. it's superior. <laughs> How has hurt the man of reason out of our? Yeah, of our, what? I, what? I, I'm yes. doing you a favor. No. Yeah, I'm doing you a favor. Can you just do just fucking pull it out and put a three rotor in it. You don't need to. I want to blow up apprentices. I want to be like, yeah, yeah, like every rotary owner, I blew up an agent. Yeah, don't people I haven't them done up that yet. Yeah, on accident. <laughs> they let them idle for too long and they my blow car's up. too reliable. <laughs>
<laughs> I've been to more events than the FCS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I just my bad. My <laughs> now I'm just gonna crash it. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna fucking crash it. You have the key. Hurt's definitely the voice of reason right now. We do need to get it to go back to LA, so it makes sense. We're gonna go ahead and watch this sideline. It is the final day of SEMA, and, and things are always winding down on Fridays. A lot of people are trying to get out of the town before everybody else is trying to get out of town, but here we are, here now. And it's exciting because this is an area that you, the general public can come to, but it is kind of the general public day. And surprisingly enough, I thought it'd be like overwhelming. It's it's really not. I think a lot of people are avoiding it, and it, so it's not as, as crazy as I thought it was. So it, it's been wonderful though. Unfortunately, by the time you see this, if you were in Vegas, I can't be like, hey, come on down, we're here. But uh, you'll see that a lot of other people got the opportunity to see the car in person. It's running fine. Isaiah made the made a lot of moves happen while I was doing all the other business stuff. He was doing all the hard work getting this car running. So um, we're gonna just spend the day. I'll probably end up super red, but that's what I love doing. I love interacting with everybody and answering all the questions and just showing off what we did and how we made it happen. We got the exhaust like done at the very last second and it sounds horrible i'm not gonna lie it sounds absolutely horrible yeah i am burning up i've stayed out here and had a wonderful time with all the fans with all the people that supported the projects i'm losing my voice you can hear it going right now we're gonna go get e85 back near the mgm grand and then start making our way back to la Now these are some like Baker, Alien Jerky, post SEMA vibes. We've got this beautiful skyline right there. These guys were all in the Toyo Tread Pass. Coincidentally, they're like, we need to get out of SEMA before it gets crazy. We did the same thing. I just ran the numbers and I ran, I've been running basically on my E85 side of the tune and we got 15.5 miles to the gallon on the E85. That's, uh, I'm kind of proud of that because it, I haven't fully tuned it, but uh, I could probably have made it all the way from here to home all in one run one take of gas so i feel pretty good about that with the 85 uh, 19 gallons in this tank and we're gonna use all of them so what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna go over to alien jerky because we all secretly love it even though they have a huge marketing campaign to make us like it we like it even more so cars running great i've got a little bit of an issue where if i hit a bump too hard there's some sort of wire connection that gets loose and, and the problem is is that i'm using the corvette wiring to then tell my wiring to turn on so it, it's i think it has something to do with the corvette wiring that got melted long ago but that's that's the biggest problem. Other than that, she's running really smooth, and we have uh, a couple fun cars to go cruising with on the way back to California. Yes, sir. We all love spicy stuff. All the way back you can hear my voice is gone so you know that this is after SEMA so it's not not some sort of magic trick where we we park them leave and then turn around and come back we actually did it cars are running phenomenal we had just random small stuff where like a bolt for the hood latch got loose so the hood I mean the hood's never gonna fly back on the Corvette it's just gonna wiggle but it didn't even do that I just caught that as I was trying to put it back down I honestly think somebody do something in my AC vent while we're over there because before it didn't have the thing now yeah i turn and go shh, shh, shh. they do like a rock or something in there but you know that, that's all i have to complain about i, I think we're doing pretty solid yeah yeah I, I really stayed out of boost on the car some things to note is that like the oil system got all the way down to 110 degrees if you're cruising really smooth so i need to rework it a little bit so that way all those are helping the coolant system so it's really cool like these are the type of th issues you'd never know unless you actually drove them you know 500 miles so super exciting wonderful trip had a great time had a great time meeting everybody and so there we go another era of us taking these cars and making serious things happen with them 
Yeah. And we got some cool projects in store coming up next. I did all that in uh, uh, three quarters of a tank. So if anybody knows how much uh, RX-8 tank is, three quarters of a tank gets you 250 miles for cruising. But yeah, I love you guys all. Really happy to see all you guys. I cried a few times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you for all the love and support.